It's officially the first week of summer, and we welcome you into a, another edition of Moral Side of the News. I'm John Bloom with the WHAS Crusade for Children. We have a panel, we have topics, so let's get started. On this week's program, <coughs> Republicans unveil their new health care bill. We'll have the latest details from ABC News. Plus, controversy continues as American college student Otto Warm Beer is returned from a North Korean prison in a coma and later dies after arriving home. We'll discuss these topics with our distinguished panel here today on this edition of Moral Side of the News. With us today are Rabbi Galia Rooks from the Temple, Reverend Daniel Corey Shule from Burnett Avenue Baptist Church, Father Bill Hammer from St. Margaret Mary Catholic Church, Reverend Sally McLean, retired Christian Church Disciples of Christ, and Dr. John Slider, Breckenridge Chapel, Free Methodist. Up first on this edition of our program, this week's Senate Republicans revealed the health care bill. Voting on the measure could come as early as next week, as proposed by Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Some are claiming the bill was put together with too much secrecy. We have the latest now from Kenneth Moten and ABC News. The big reveal, the Senate GOP health care bill has emerged. It's time to act because Obamacare is a direct attack on the middle class. The Senate version establishes a system of tax credits to help Americans buy insurance, eliminates Affordable Care Act mandates requiring people to have coverage, provides 10 to $15 billion annually over the next four years to help lower premiums, and it rolls back the expansion of Medicaid for low-income Americans, giving more power to the states. Another point of contention, the rush to vote next week, health care for millions of Americans on the line. Senate Republicans can only afford to lose two votes. Senators got their first look at their plan to overhaul Obamacare this morning. This is a bill designed to strip away health care benefits and protections from Americans who need it most in order to give a tax break to the folks who need it least. Last month, President Trump celebrated when House Republicans passed their version, later privately saying the bill was, quote, mean. So sad, Mr. President. Heartless. Mean and heartless. And this is the same thing. It's the same thing all over again. In Iowa last night, Trump raging against Democrats. If we went and got the single greatest health care plan in the history of the world, we would not get one Democrat vote because they're obstructionists. The fight a long way from being over. The Senate plan will need a score from the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office before a vote, possibly next week. If the bill passes, then it's back to the House. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Washington. And we turn to our panel on this edition of Moral Side of the News. And panel, your reaction to the latest that we know thus far about the health care bill. It's evil. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's evil. Whenever there is such a, um, such a shadowy and such a covert effort uh, to, to undermine progress of this nation has made to care for its least and its poorest citizens and uh, that overhaul is done behind closed doors and it's not able it's not been allowed to have public uh, critique I think it's evil you're objecting to uh, having to pass it before we can see what's in the well, bill. I, I object to um, I, I object to the repeal and replace I'm, I'm, I'm digging at you there. Uh, I'm yes sorry. Uh, so well I, see I, I think there's some other moral angles to this mm -hmm. Uh, and that is, um, under the current system, uh, many people, a, a majority of people, especially in rural areas, losing their options, losing their ability to choose. Uh, of course, rising costs of people who are actually having to pay for their own and others through the tax system. So I, and I, you know, I really question the morality and think it is evil since you opened that door, uh, for uh, a, one group of people to take the resources of another group of people and give them to a third group, which is what uh, the uh, current health care system is. I think living in a democracy, though, in, um, and, and uh, in a society like ours, in order for uh, the least among us to be cared for, it calls upon those who have more resources to give those resources. In Do you a way. see a biblical basis for this? Well, I think it's, uh, um, for, it's for no for the use of the state to force others to take. Do you see a biblical? Well, oh, the Old Testament uh, when we when we read Leviticus, 
In Leviticus, uh, that nation, they were required, they were admonished to leave some grain on the edges of their property okay. for those who were the least. Those yeah, who were and, and of those course, who they weren't leaving uh, health insurance plans on the edge of the, of the field. Oh, but on the other hand, you have, you have any tax, any tax at all, it takes money from somebody and sure. gives it to somebody else. Well, no, yes. not necessarily. Yes, every tax does. does. Not uh, tax dollars that go to, to the military. Well, that's taken from somebody else, my money, to, pr to go to somebody else. To provide a service to right. you. And to others. Okay. But the tax that is, uh, so many of the taxes don't come directly to benefit me that I'm contributing to the overall budget. So I don't... Need, he doesn't have children, but yeah. part of his taxes, taxes go, go to, to pay schools. for public okay. schools. Yes. Well, so I'm just saying that I'm, I'm, in very principle. I'm very interested that, that, uh, that uh, Corey is in favor of a strong uh, integration of church and state, as is uh, shown in the Old Testament. Uh, because that was the, f the was the requirement back then. So it you was, you were no, you asked me for a biblical precedent. And yeah, I, I and and there was also that. in the Old Testament the close connection be, between the king and religion. Israel. So you're in favor of that but in the United States of America, which we claim to be a you know religious or a yes. spiritual nation. We believe that the flourishing of society demands that everyone contribute, not only to their own benefit, but for their neighbors around them, especially those who are poor. And I'll be quiet after this. When I would say it is spiritually corrupt for me to vote for one person to give money to another. Well, I uh, think that... And it, uh, it is, it is more spiritual or moral for me to do it directly. And I think that's the biblical I I, mandate. I disagree with you. I think, okay. I think it is a, our moral obligation to elect officials who ensure that the collected resources of our communities, our, our nation even, are distributed in a way that not only aids the rich, but also looks after the poor. So you're in favor of a strong out. state that takes money from favor, those with resources I'm in, I'm and redistributes the state doing finished. what the state I am, I'm, I'm sorry. To do. I'm so sorry. you're not in favor of Medicaid or Medicare I'm, I, either? I finished. He says he's finished, go ahead. <laughs> well, what is, what, Sally, is the, go ahead. what is the morality of having ways to uh, eliminate disease and then people can't afford it. For example, you, you were just diagnosed with cancer, but you can't afford the policy that helps you take care well, of Well, you're it. asking me to, to no, not no, be No, no, I'm finished. just saying that to me that's the, that's the moral question. When we do so much for research and we make advances in research and then the people don't have access to the research that's available. So what, isn't there a moral obligation I, I there? Think, I think that's true. I think on the list of 10 moral issues underlying what we're talking about, that's maybe number 10. I mean, I think that, that, that there's just so much going on here, so much, starting with the fact that it's being done behind closed doors, the whole way through no committees, <laughs> no uh, reviews, no questions, even among the other Republicans. That's number, that, I don't know if in pro order of priority, but that is a definite one. I think the idea of um, taking health insurance from those who can't afford to pay regular health insurance in order to make tax breaks for the rich or to make uh, the health care companies that are making so much money to give them tax breaks, I think that is uh, the sign of a morally bankrupt country or administration. I think that the idea of taking, um, taking away funding from Planned Parenthood, which is how millions of women get their health care, is morally abhorrent. I think that the president, you know, we just saw a clip where he said if he had the most perfect health care plan in the history of the world, which, you know, if this is, then I think everyone should vote for it, but apparently it isn't. I don't believe it's true that Democrats wouldn't vote for it if it really were great. I just, I just don't believe that, and I resent him saying that. And I think that um, the rush to do it, I mean, the uh, Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, was an open discussion, oh. committees, this and that, and they took 25 days before it came up for a vote. 25 days. So... I don't think we need to <clears throat> lose uh, sight of what's under, what, what is the moral conundrum underneath this push to repeal the health care bill. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's, it's been called Obamacare for the last eight years, mm -hmm. and the reality is, eight years ago, when it was first presented, Donald Trump and his cronies said 
that they were going to ensure, Mitch McConnell included, mm -hmm. that Obamacare was repealed and replaced. It did not matter the substance of the bill. It did not matter what it did for poor people or for rich people. Or for the, middle class or people. Or for the middle class people. They did not want it because it was attached to Barack Obama. It is a function of racism. Oh, well, certainly we, we will have Corey, there you hopefully go. Hopefully to play the card. No, no, but, but it really is. When, no, so it when, is. When hopefully. do we, no, why else isn't. are we repealing because it's not millions. working. It is working. Um, no, it isn't. We live in a state that that proved right. this is a no. An it proved that people system. signed up, but it also no, proved it that it, 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 well, it improved their health care. Yes. It, it improved their health care. No, it did not. Especially it in rural it did not. areas. It's not it health, 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 health insurance. More Kentuckians have health care now and access to health benefits than ever before. That's, that's, you and can't that even deny that. that is statistically proven. Yeah, you can't deny that. Have access to health care. Right. Because of the health insurance. That's the moral yes. question. Yes. Yes. Access is the moral question, okay. I think. And now can they afford it? Well, well if they have access to it, then no, I'm assuming that... No, just because you can walk in the door doesn't mean you can afford yes, what the... Yes. If they have insurance, oh, yes. yes. The hospitals aren't allowed to turn away people because they don't have... But that's not... <laughs> That's not health care insurance. That's ch that's the hospitals providing charity. Okay. That's, maybe, that's in a previous system. I don't think anyone is saying that Obamacare was perfect. It isn't. No, it, it isn't. isn't. No one is saying that. that. So, but, but you, you don't fix kill it. it. it was a you great, amend it. It was a great first step. Well, one step. of the things so that I'm going to hope for is that some of this kind of discussion gets to be more reasonable <laughs> as it goes forward. Uh, I know that there have been plenty of times when both political parties have stood up and said, we've been given this big stack of paper and we're supposed to vote on it and we don't know what's in 1100 it. 1,100 pages. We're at, right. this, right. we're at this time, right, right. this moment, right. as we're talking, right. a document's being proposed and only a handful of people have read it. And to think that it can be voted on in that short of a period of time, I think, belies the fact that we're having this kind of a discussion here among people who are, who are focused on trying to do the right thing and to promote good and goodness as opposed to doing the wrong things. And if we're having this kind of a struggle, of course, we don't have the information in front of us. And why exactly did Trump was, call it mean? President Trump, you mean? Yes. I, I don't know. You'll have to ask President Trump. Trump called it mean because he President does not Trump. possess the vocabulary to articulate. And he probably hasn't even read it. He well, doesn't know what's sure in it. He, well, he, he you is know, still pandering. Not everybody refers to him as president. Some people refer well, to him as four to five. I, call Trump I don't. Trump. I call President well, Obama fine, President fine. Obama. President Let's Trump. just get it. Yeah. So, but the bottom line It's is, a complete lack of respect, and it's an assumption. Well, Mr. Mr. It's an Trump assumption that racism is behind everything here. As a middle, here, school, as a middle that, schooler. No, oh, Donald it. Trump. That, Donald Trump has proven himself to be racist, xenophobic, misogynist. No. That is proven. Islamophobic. No, it isn't. I, I how, agree with you, but you know what? Wait, can Just I, because can you I would disagree with the policy no, it's doesn't not mean... With the well, okay. Yeah. He, the, I don't think we have another I'm tired of it. president I'm not, in the, <laughs> the racism past for nice. years that has... What, so what, if it's not racism, if it is not xenophobia, if it is not a hatred for the sheer humanity of everything that is not a white, rich male, then what is it? What well, do we so call So that's it? what you're accusing me of. No, I'm accusing, no, you're, because I'm I'm accusing agreeing Mitch with, McConnell, Donald Trump. But I'm agreeing with that policy. So you are calling me, what, a racist, a xenophobe? I'm, you don't well, even know me. Uh, no, I'm not accusing you. Yes, you are. I, I said Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell. You're now, I do think me. that anyone who agrees with stripping poor people of their health care. They're I not think being they stripped are, of health care. I think they're morally bankrupt, and they really have an issue. So you're calling me morally bankrupt. Okay, I, let, I, me, I, jump probably, probably. let oh, me jump probably. in here. Let me jump in here. First you. of all, we don't honestly know it's going to strip everyone of their health care. Right. It's Thursday, 1 o'clock, when we're taping this break. But, fourth but wall. we're clear. So, but, okay, but we know... Right. It gives and, tax and, breaks and, and to the one rich. Other th yes. And, no, it and it strips the subsidies for the poor. It does. It does. It does. The, okay. I mean, this is a basic fact. Okay. You've we read this. Read it. No, we haven't read it yet. I have then not you don't read know. The bill, but and you from all the reporting, that's my point right. about why we're even talking exactly. about this right. point. I've raised that already. We right. don't have the information. Hopefully, but what about if, what's been reported? Yes. Well, that that was a summary. Uh, so, so based on the summary. It this strips is away health care for millions it's, it's and mil hundreds of millions of Americans and gives tax breaks to the rich and tax breaks to the insurance companies. But I do want to disagree with you on one thing. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that President Donald Trump is xenophobic and racist and misogynistic and Islamophobic and a whole bunch of other nasty things. However, 
I do believe that if Obama were white, had been white, and a Democratic president had put forth, let's say it was Clinton, and it was Clinton care instead of Obamacare, I still think he would be as committed to repeal and replace. I don't know that I agree with that. Well, of course you I, don't. I, I, I don't. I don't agree with that <laughs> because for eight years, Barack Obama was the leader of the president of the United States of America, and every single thing he presented, right. the Republicans right. never were able to get behind one item, nothing that he ever proposed. That, I, I agree and, with and that. And so you mean to yep. tell me that this man never came up with anything that was worth the support of Republicans? Well, that, that's I mean, patently false, but... Uh, what is patently false? Uh, that pre everything for eight years President Obama came up with, the Republicans did not... Uh, Check the record. Mitch McConnell, when he was elected, said he, he, he is the leader intervention of the in Libya. Republican Party. Intervention in Libya. They were, they, <laughs> the intervention in Libya, they attacked the way well, that he went about it. Republicans wanna, of all. I want to go to a second topic. Yeah, okay, please. we'll get back to that some other time on Libya. That's <laughs> when we have information. Right. Yeah. yeah, when we know there you what we're go. talking well, about. Well, that'll be never, but I wish All right. Well, the report the will go, is going public today, as I understand. Yes. Second topic on our program today, the American college student from Cincinnati who died just days after he was released from a North Korean prison was laid to rest this week. Otto Warmbier arrived home in a coma and never regained consciousness. ABC's Lindsay Janis reports. This morning, new footage showing Otto Warmbier in Pyongyang just before he was detained. The 22-year-old throwing snowballs with fellow college students and North Korean kids. The Warmbiers releasing this playful video hours after doctors revealed Otto suffered extensive brain damage during his captivity. Warmbier's father railing against the North Korean regime's treatment of his son and their claim he contracted botulism. Even if you believe their explanation of botulism and a sleeping pill causing the coma, and we don't, there is no excuse for any civilized nation to have kept his condition secret and denied him top-notch medical care for so long. After only a one-hour trial in March of last year, I have made the worst mistake of my life. Warmbier was sentenced to 15 years hard labor for allegedly stealing a propaganda poster. We're thrilled that our son is on American soil. We're in, we're in the school that he thrived in, and I'm able to talk to you on Otto's behalf, and I'm able to wear the jacket that he wore when he gave his confession. But this morning, what happened to the University of Virginia student during his nearly 18 months of detention? Still a mystery. Doctors saying all they know is his brain was deprived of oxygen. He has spontaneous eye opening and blinking. However, he shows no signs of understanding language, responding to verbal commands, or awareness of his surroundings. This study showed extensive loss of brain tissue in all regions of the brain. They say they see no evidence of botulism or of physical beatings. Warmbier's doctors say he likely suffered respiratory arrest, the cause of which is unknown. The family is keeping the next steps of his medical care private for now. Lindsay Janis, ABC News, Cincinnati, Ohio. So we turn to our panel here on Moral Side. There's a panel, how should the U.S. government respond to North Korea's treatment of Wambir, which apparently led to his death. Your thoughts? We've already condemned it. I mean, that's, and, and we should too. The, you know, the father of self characterizes is not a civilized nation in terms of the leaders. I'm sure there are civilized people in North Korea. But uh, one of the things that I think, again, we're lacking information uh, is that we don't know the cause of his death other than there was some kind of you know, deprivation. But uh, we're still awaiting if there's going to be any toxology reports released or not, and that's one of the critical the things. The family is asked not yeah, to have an autopsy. That. Exactly, so and so that I certainly will always <coughs> handicap any ability to try to evaluate exactly what happened. My heart goes out to the Warmbier family. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody who's had children who's traveled uh, yeah. to foreign countries, even yeah. friendly countries, there's always some risk whenever you uh, take off, and uh, uh, there's you know, ample examples of somebody innocently being involved, swept up in, in crimes that happen. 
uh, but uh, it's just a sad, sad thing. And it should never have ended this way, obviously. Well, I think just the idea that he was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor, you know, I, is just atrocious um, and inhumane and, you know, but we're talking about North Korea. Yes. Is anyone surprised here? Um, they tested him extensively when he came home. I mean, the, the only reason he was released is because he was dying and they knew that. And so they, you know, released him, which, you know, too little too late, but I suppose a blessing at least that they Have had him back again before he actually died. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, there, were, they looked, there was no evidence of botulism at all. And, you know, one can speculate on various forms of torture that don't leave physical marks on the body and what have you. We're talking about a healthy college kid here. So, you know, it's hard to believe that he just spontaneously suffered a massive stroke that, you know, well, there are two levels here. There's the personal <coughs> level and then there's the national level. Right. And the personal level is that they may choose not to know what happened. Mm -hmm. right. Would you want to go through that to find out what your child did over something that we would consider in the United States an innocent act, something a, practic a prank a college kid would do? Mm -hmm. And then there's the national level. And if we go to the national level, what can the national level do about it? I mean, that we can cite example after example of, you know, that that's inhumane, but it doesn't mean that anything is going to be done about it. So, I, you know, I, I don't know if it were if it were my child. I don't know that I would want to know every detail about what happened. And I'm and not so sure I think an autopsy that, can really tell that anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure it can either. So, I, you know, I, I understand where they're coming from, and then I wonder what the country can do about it. I do want to say that, you know, when your child is traveling to a country that is hostile to the United States, please pay attention. You know, even the slightest thing, they, people don't realize they hate us. It's not that they don't like us, they hate us. I have a friend whose daughter was um, teaching English in uh, Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> and um, fortunately, they kicked her out of the country. <laughs> she yes. wasn't allowed access to a computer without someone watching her all the time of what she, I mean, never mind that she couldn't leave the house without a male escort and wasn't allowed to drive and this, that, and the other. But she really, you know, wanted to be able to email people without it being someone standing over her shoulder. And fortunately, they just kicked her out. But, you know, you, you have to be careful, as you say, Sally, when, when, when traveling to a country, um, and, and a country that in America, from our Western perspective, but I would like to say from a broader moral perspective, um, is really not respecting human rights. You know, like China. I mean, I, I think you know, people who go visit China, that it's, it's very scary to me that they, they do not have the same human rights beliefs that I do and that I think that most of Well, and they don't do. value human beings as much mm -hmm. in, in some of these countries right. as we do in the United States. So the family takes comfort in having him home. Yes. Yes. They can give him a proper burial. But beyond that, is there more that you expect out of the country to do more than just condemn it? Well, yeah, there, your, your, your question was about our, our nation's response mm -hmm. and our government's response, essentially. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the response to this, uh, this easily recognized evil uh, is not simply condemnation. It's not simply, uh, you know... Oh, you know, you go to bed without uh, dessert or something Sater, like saber, that. Saber rattling? Well, I don't even, you rattle a saber, you got to be ready to use it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have the moral will to do that as a nation. Um, you know, uh, sanctions are meaningless in this situation, probably. Um, well, without all multiple countries cooperating yeah. because we can put a sanction on but then there's still access through other nations you know they're so, so they're, the population in North Korea is is so I, I mean I don't even have a word well, to ingrained, describe well, it. Well, well, but I, uh, what I was no ever, no no they haven't I don't think they bought into the the system there the but they're, they're just so impoverished that is any that that even says it better than it really is, that a, what's a sanction, you know, what the... Well, I was just referencing okay. that it was reported in the news earlier because of the nuclear testing that was yeah. going on, the missile testing, that apparently with our encouragement, China had started cutting back on some of their support, 
but then Russia has filled the gap. And so, yeah. I mean, that was reported in the news. So, so you do any kind of sanction, that's true whether you put sanctions against Syria or you put sanctions against any other country, unless you have the whole world buying into it, there's always ways well, around and China it. had favored nation status when they were leaving little girls on the side of the road and on the tops of mountains. Baby girls, because if you can only have one child and you want it to be yeah. a boy. I mean, but the government did not do all it could do in that case, in, in, in many cases. I remember when our daughter was deployed to Afghanistan and uh, Iraq, and I asked our son, what if she gets captured? What do you, you know, what, what do you do? And he said, Mom, you pray very hard that she dies. That's your prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, what what to do? At, at some point, there's, <laughs> I hate to couch it in these terms, but th there's a line you draw, and we, if we have to cross it, I mean, an embargo is, is a little more aggressive at sanction, but then you need China involved, yes, and, and Russia, that is an act Russia, of war, Russia, an embargo. Russia, so, so, if you don't um, want to start yet another war in yet another part of the world. Um, so do you anticipate anything getting better with North Korea, or is it, your, is it the biggest worry we have in terms of, of a country? Uh, do you anticipate biggest? it getting better? No. Not in the near future. No. no. Not with the present leadership, no. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do oh, think that North Korea. Yeah, North yeah, Korea, Korea I, leadership. Yes, I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Although it was mentioned in the uh, uh, one of the re news reports, I thought was that the father of the of the boy who died mm -hmm. revealed a conversation that he had with the president, and the president indicated that our uh, I think Secretary of State had been actively negotiating his release. Right. Now, um, yeah, so, I, I so think the he, administration yeah. has been obviously in some right, dialogue I over. I imagine because he's not the only American in prison right now, right, right? In, in North Korea. I think there's three others, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but the president did say that his people were actively engaged in, in that conversation. It's a bad world out there. In some places, yeah. It's a scary world. So, do you think anything will happen with North Korea? Do you anticipate any military action down the road? Do you think? Uh, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. I pray not. I, we've asked so much of our military already. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was a statement the other day that came out uh, about us not being at war. And I thought, I emailed the person and I said, you, you don't know we're at war? We are still at war, people. Yeah. Um, and though you have so few soldiers, a lot of people don't even know a military family. So it, I, I hope we don't do anything else. That'll wrap up this edition of Moral Side of the News. Thank you to our panel, Galia Rooks, Daniel Corey Shule, Bill Hammer, Sally McLean, and John Slider. And reminder, you can watch this program again anytime on WHAS11.com. And tune in again next week when the lively art of conversation continues here on this program. Each and every week on WHAS11.com and again on WHAS Radio and WHAS TV. Thanks, and thanks for watching and listening, and have a great day. We'll see you next time.